Hello, and welcome to the worship of Trinity Lutheran Church in West Bend, Wisconsin. I'm Pastor Christy, and this is Pastor David Schub, and we are sharing during this epiphany season the attributes of light and what they have to say to us through the scriptures and, and through our lives. So today, the focus is on light brings clarity, and we'll begin our worship. We start with some thoughts for the day. The first is from Amanda Gorman. There is light if only we are brave enough to see it. If only we're brave enough to be it. From Martin Luther King Jr. I refuse to accept the view that mankind is so tragically bound to the starless midnight of racism and war that the bright daylight of peace and brotherhood can never become a reality. I believe that unarmed truth and unconditional love will have the final word. And then finally, from the scriptures themselves, from St. Paul, his 13th chapter of 1 Corinthians, we don't yet see things clearly. We're squinting in a fog, peering through a mist. But it won't be long before the weather clears and the sun shines bright. We'll see it all then, See it all as clearly as God sees us, knowing God directly, just as God knows us. But for right now, until that completeness, we have three things to do to lead us toward that ending. Trust steadily in God, hope unswervingly, love extravagantly, and the best of the three is love.
I invite you to join in the call to worship. Let us worship our God who is with us in the midst of life. We gladly offer our praises to our God who goes with us. Sometimes it seems that life is constantly changing. In every changing event, God invites us to change for the better. Our God is not content to let us wander aimlessly. Our God calls us to change course so that we are headed for life and wholeness. I invite you now to bow your hearts and join me in our confession prayer. Let us confess to God and before one another our sins, especially we confess our reluctance to move beyond our lifelong behaviors, understandings, and to faithfully lean into new beginnings. Lord, help me keep my life in balance. Help me focus on you, Lord, in my work and my play. Lord, help me keep my life in balance. You, Lord, are my hope, my strength for the day. We confess to you, O God, and before one another, that, that we, we have, have sinned. sinned. We, we know, know that, that our behavior is not always what it needs to be, and that, that our choices are not always wise. Far too often we choose a path that leads to harm for ourselves and for those around us. We choose things that break us and our relationships instead of choosing the things that heal and unify. Forgive us and renew us in your spirit that we may become what you created us to be. Lord, help me keep my life in balance. Help me focus on you, Lord, in my work and my play. Lord, help me keep my life in balance. You, Lord, are my hope, my strength for the day. Divine light, uncovering our shadows and darkness, we turn to you in hope and fear. We long to be freed from times of confusing darkness, when depression and despair haunt our days and trouble our nights. We pray for clearer answers and creative new directions. Lord, help me keep my life in balance. Help me focus on you, Lord, in my work and my play. Lord, help me keep my life in balance. You, Lord, are my hope, my strength for the day. Light of truth, we are quick to claim our place as your children but we are slow to grow up. Finding ourselves to be a part of your family, we are content to stay as we are. We forget that we have been called to a way and to an ever-expanding reign. Forgive us and empower us with your spirit to stretch ourselves as we more fully realize your reign in our lives and in all our relationships. Lord, help me keep my life in balance. Help me focus on you, Lord, in my work and my play. Lord, help me keep my life in balance. You, Lord. 
Lord of my hope, my strength for the day. Loving God, healing light, remind us that you desire not our punishment, but our salvation. Your light is gracious and brings insight and renewal, hope and blessing. Restore our courage and make us your light for others. Amen. Our first lesson today comes from the third chapter of Jonah, beginning at the first verse. Next, God spoke to Jonah a second time. Up, on your feet and on your way to the big city of Nineveh. Preach to them. They're in a bad way, and I can't ignore it any longer. This time, Jonah started off straight for Nineveh, obeying God's orders to the letter. Nineveh was a big city, very big. It took three days to walk across it. Jonah entered the city, went one day's walk, and preached, In 40 days, Nineveh will be smashed. The people of Nineveh listened, trusted God. They proclaimed a citywide fast, dressed up in burlap to show their repentance. Everyone did it, rich and poor, famous and obscure, leaders and followers. God saw what they had done, that they had turned away from their evil lives. He did change his mind about them. What he said he would do to them, he didn't do. Our second reading comes from the seventh chapter of 1 Corinthians in the message. I do want to point out, friends, that time is of the essence. There's no time to waste, so don't complicate your lives unnecessarily. Keep it simple in marriage, grief, joy, whatever. Even in ordinary things, your daily routines of shopping and so on. Deal as sparingly as possible with the things the world thrusts on you. This world, as you see it, is fading away. And from the first chapter of Mark in the message. After John was arrested, Jesus went to Galilee preaching the message of God. Time's up. God's kingdom is here. Change your life and believe the message. Passing along on the beach of Lake Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew net fishing. Fishing was their regular work. Jesus said to them, come with me. I'll make a new kind of fisherman out of you. I'll show you how to catch men and women instead of perch and bass. They didn't ask questions. They dropped their nets and followed. A dozen yards or so down the beach, he saw the brothers James and John, Zebedee's sons. They were in the boat mending their fishing nets. Right off, he made the same offer. Immediately, they left their father Zebedee, the boat, and the hired hands, and followed. Grace, mercy, and peace to each of you this day. From God, our Creator, Christ, our Savior, and the Spirit, who sustains us and strengthens us and encourages and supports our growth as children of God. Amen. So I said at the beginning of our worship that the message today is that light brings clarity. It's an important attribute because when it comes to being children of God, I'm afraid too often we all stray off the path without even realizing that we've left it. Those words from 1 Corinthians haunted me all week long. You know, in, in the traditional way, it's though now I see through a glass darkly. The idea is that our vision of reality is clouded. Um, more and more these days, that's become more and more obvious because it seems like people are seeing totally different realities and not living and not listening to one another. We're not even able to hear what they're saying. Our vision, our understanding has been darkened by things of this world. And so these lessons today are a wake-up call for us to recognize that every day we need to put ourselves into the light of Christ and ask God, help me see things clearly. We need to challenge ourselves because it's so easy. It's so easy to lose our focus, to stray and be lost 
without even thinking that we are. I remember when I was growing up, I was afraid of the dark. I was one of those many kids that, yeah, yeah, let me sleep with the lights on and those sort of things. But it was true. I really needed them because for the longest time, when the lights were out and the shadows in my room were visible, I would be constantly waking up my parents going, there's a witch in the corner of my room or there's pirates burying treasure at the end of my bed. And, you know, they'd come and flip on the lights and sure enough, it was, you know, a pile of blankets or, you know, some of my toys piled up in a corner that were making me think that. But I was convinced, terrified, that those actually scary things were there. But the light brought clarity. That's an easy example. Some of the examples of how our, our sight is clouded are much more undercover, are much more suspicious. We don't even know it's happening. These past couple weeks in confirmation, we've been talking about the fourth commandment. We've been talking to our youth about those ways of looking at the world that have been programmed into them without their even knowing and how we need to put that under the light of God's love and, and ask what that means. One of our favorite exercises that we do, and I will admit, I don't think any group I've ever been in has ever had anyone do it right unless they had done it before. I did it wrong the first time too. We set down hula hoops, put candy inside of each, you know, explain to each of the teams that the goal of this exercise is to get all the candy in your hoop. And then we say go. And what happens then is a riot of people trying to sit on and guard what's in their hoop while others go out and try to steal everything from somebody else's. There's pushing and shoving and chaos and yelling. And depending, you know, no matter how long we give them, by the end, it always looks like they all have the same amount of candy or close to the same amount of candy in the middle of their hoops. And then we say, okay, everybody stand back. We're going to solve this dilemma in, you know, just a little uh, over a minute because it takes a while to move things. And as everybody stands and watches people leading the game, pick up each of the hoops, set them on top of each other, pick up all the candy, put it in the middle, and say, look, everybody won. Our candy is in the middle, of, all the candy is in the middle of our hoop. And it points out, it points out over and over again to us, and hopefully it's something uh, most kids remember once they've done it once. Um, but we're conditioned. We're conditioned to think that in order for me to get ahead, you all have to get behind. In order for me to be number one, everybody else. You know, in order for me to have what I want, nobody else can have more or what I want. Um, insidious messages that our world teaches us, shadows that cover the clarity of God's light because it's a very different message than the message Jesus was bringing. And so this this day we are challenged to ask ourselves for the light of God's love to bring clarity to ourselves. We are called to look at the scriptures and hear what they're saying. The scriptures from 1 Corinthians, right? You know, it says, we see through a glass darkly, but again, listen to how it ended, right? For right now, until our vision clears, we have three things to do to lead us in the right direction. Trust steadily in God, hope unswervingly in God's promises, and love extravagantly. And of all of them, St. Paul writes, the best is to start with loving extravagantly. Our lesson from Jonah kind of gives a, re a real life illustration of how cloudy our lives become. You know, 
if you listen carefully when Pastor Dave read it, he read you something that started this time. Jonah listened to God, even though he gave his whole 1%. <laughs> Nowhere near 100%. That's because God had told him before to go save Nineveh. And Jonah had judged Nineveh already and said, it's not worth it. It's not worth my time to try. I don't know why God would want me to do that. That's crazy. And so Jonah tried to refuse. That's when that big fish comes in. But once that big fish spit him back out on the shore and God told him to go again, this time <laughs> Jonah went in. And it, Nineveh's a big city, so it's very much the picture they give you is that Jonah walked in and kind of like looked around sneering and goes, God's going to wipe you all out unless you change your ways. And that was it. You know, maybe he even whispered it because he, you know, and much to his chagrin, even that little bit of effort was answered by God helping the people of Nineveh change course. They didn't have to go on being what they were, and they chose not to go on being what they were, and they were saved. God, God's light works through us, but brings clarity that goes beyond our own prejudices, beyond our own problems, beyond our own divisions, and brings healing and hope and life. Our second lesson reminds us that, you know, now is the time to stop focusing on all these little calls that the world puts on us and recognize that now is the time as children of God to turn to God for the light and the clarity to let some of that stuff that doesn't matter go and worry about the important things. When I was studying for the ministry, and I, I wish I could tell you who told me, I received a piece of the best advice I've ever had. I've quoted it a million times. You know, I was talking about trying to get something that I wanted done, done. And why were people taking so long and why weren't they listening and what's going on and someone just looked at me and said Chris you've got to learn that there just are some hills not worth dying on <laughs> when we talk about clarity God reminds us to keep the things of this world in their place to keep things like getting our own way under wraps, it's, it's more important that we are advocates for God's way and let things go from there. As children of God, that's our calling. Jesus underlined it in today's gospel, right? We always talk about how amazing it is, you know, the story itself, that Jesus would just walk up to these fishermen on the beach and say, leave everything you know, leave everything you've thought, you know, Drop all that, leave behind the worries of your life, and follow me. And we're, we all go, wow, you know, that somebody could do it. But the truth is, that's the same invitation that Jesus gives to each one of us. It may not happen immediately like it does in the Gospel of Mark, but it can happen gradually. The Spirit gives us the strength to listen, to look, and to follow, to slowly let go of the things that are obstructing our vision of God's dream and focus on where God is calling us and where God has put us and how we can shine with God's love there. Jesus said, time's up. God's kingdom is here. God's kingdom is now. Change your life. Believe the message. Follow me. And we need to listen to that call today. Ever, ever as much as they needed to listen then to begin this movement that changed the world. And it's not easy. 
it is very true that the light can bring clarity and dissipate some of our fears that are overblown. But it can also bring a sometimes upsetting clarity to how far we have strayed. And it's not easy to confront that. And it's not easy to look at things that we've done and said and thought forever and said, whoops, that's taken me down the wrong path. I need to ask God's help to put things right again, to be a little clearer about where the path is. Think back about the hoops exercise, the hula hoop and candy exercise. It is uncomfortable to be confronted with ways of thinking that are definitely not the way that Jesus thought, and yet we have accepted as just the way it is. I was so impressed when I heard at the inauguration this week Amanda Gorman say, we can't mistake what just is for justice. We have to examine ourselves. We have to let that light clarify where we're going the wrong way. And if we're going in a way that is not loving, that above all, then we need to redirect. And we need, you know, to, to reassess how we are and ask for God's help. There's a real reason that as we talk about the gospel, the message, the focus is on Good Friday to Easter Sunday. The focus is on the fact that in order for new life and new beginnings to happen, forgiveness is vital. It's the first step. Forgiveness is something that allows us to move from the shackles of the past into whatever tomorrow can bring. And as children of God, we need to confront our issues, to ask God for help, and then find that freedom to forgive as we have been forgiven and figure out a way to move forward to something better. And finally, we have to recognize that we're not in this alone. As we talk about the light that gives us clarity, we're reminded again that the source of this ability to grow and to be better is God. And whatever other messages we've learned, we need to quiet those voices in order to hear Jesus' voice saying, and I will make you fishers of people. And so I share with you a story I've shared before, but again, it shows that insidious teaching that the world teaches us that is in contrast to what Jesus said. It's a, simple, it's a simple story. A little boy was spending his Saturday morning playing in his sandbox. He had with him his box of cars and trucks, his plastic pail and a shiny red plastic shovel. In the process of creating roads and tunnels in the soft sand, he discovered a large rock in the middle of the sandbox. The child dug around the rock, managing to dislodge it from the dirt. With no little bit of struggle, he pushed and nudged the rock across the sandbox by using his feet and all of his weight. He was a very small boy, and the rock was very huge. When the boy got the rock to the edge of the sandbox, however, he found that he could not roll it up over the little wall. Determined, the little boy shoved and pushed and pried, but every time he thought he had made some progress, the rock tipped and then fell back into the sandbox. The little boy grunted and struggled, pushed and shoved, but his only reward was to have the rock roll back and smash his fingers. Finally, he burst into tears of frustration. All this time, the boy's father watched from his living room window as the drama unfolded. At the moment the tears fell, a large shadow fell across the boy in the sandbox. It was the boy's father. Gently but firmly, he said, Son, why didn't you use all the strength that you had available? Defeated, the boy sobbed, 
I did, Daddy, I did. I used all the strength that I had. No, son, corrected his father kindly. You did not use all the strength you had. You didn't ask me. With that, the father reached down, picked up the rock, and removed it from the sandbox. The light makes clear when we've wandered off the path, but the light also gives us the strength and the courage and the determination to find our way back on and move forward. In expressing her hopes and dreams for the new country, Amanda Gorman, again in her inaugural poem, shared a thought that as children of God, we can easily take, that easily translates to our journey forward in faith. She says, So while we once asked, how could we possibly prevail over catastrophe? Now we assert, how could catastrophe possibly prevail over us? We will not march back to what was, but move to what shall be. And that sh what shall be for all of us as children of God is a new beginning every day to reaffirm our commitment to walk the path that Jesus led, to do it to the best of our ability, and when that's exhausted, to lean on God's strength, but to move forward with the goal of love everlasting and the hope of knowing that God has changed the world over and over again. And God is in the midst of changing the world for the better every day. Amen. and martyrs, God of the powerless child, God of the hurt and the hopeless and unreconciled, God of the just and the faithful, God of the night and the day, God of the whole of creation, in your name we pray. Many have followed the Savior into the face of the storm. Strengthened by long generations, by love they were formed. In basements of tall steeple churches, in shadows of fences and walls, in alleys and hallways and power, they've answered your call. Now it's our turn to do justice. Humbly we rise to the day. Give us the strength and the wisdom to walk in your way. Gather the loaves and the fishes. Share until all have been fed. Walk in compassion and mercy by love will be led. Standing in circles surrounding, all holding hands while we pray. When powers bear down on the helpless, we'll stand in the way. God of the worn and the wounded, let us be healed by the truth. When doorways are blocked, we will lower our friends through the roof. God of the circle that holds us, God of the ones pushed away, we will reach out to our neighbors in your name we say. No matter your creed or your country, no matter the hue of your skin, Age who you love or the body your soul was born in. No 
matter the places you're broken, no matter the things you have done, lay down the weight on the altar, a new day's begun. You are a child of the Maker, you are beloved and known. Join us in work of the kingdom, we welcome you home. Join us in work of the kingdom, we welcome you home. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Loving parent, Today we long to be held. We long to be held not by the hateful actions we see on our televisions, not by a virus that continually kills thousands upon thousands, not by our divisions and the things which cause us to break apart. We long to be held by your unbreakable, unshakable, and infinite love. We long to be covered by you, that we can take a breath, and step away from the chaos and division happening in our world. And yet we know that we too must do the work to make our community and world a place filled with your love and your justice. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Remind us, Lord, that this is your world, and that no matter what happens here to any of us, we always remain yours and belong fully and completely to you. We ask that you help us to embody you as we find a way to spread your justice in this world and in all of us who remain so broken. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We thank you that you do not leave us alone to wander aimlessly in life. Nor do you sit on the sidelines and watch as we head into trouble and destruction. We thank you for the guidance you offer us and for the care you take to redirect our ways. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for all your children in their needs and especially for those who have lost their way in life. We know what it is like to be headed in the wrong direction. And we pray that as you seek the lost ones, we would join you in your task. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for those whose names we don't know, who face tomorrows that they never saw coming and are terrified to face. And then we pray for those whose names we do know and who we know that this day are in need of your comforting, healing, and sustaining presence. We remember especially Dick and Carrie, Jean and Debbie, Gino, Eileen, Leon, Candy, Jerry, Betty, Dennis, Tom, Karen, Kelsey, Evelyn, Catherine, Jacob, Christine, Linda, Calvin, Mike, Brian, Dorothy, Heidi, Andrea, Mick, Val, and all those whom we name before you in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. All these things we ask in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray together, saying, our Father, Father, who art, art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. There is light if only we are brave enough to see it. If only we are brave enough to be it. God has given you a new identity and a holy call. Receive God's gift, unwrap it, savor its surprise. 
Be confident of your release. Be encouraged in your growth. Be empowered to shine. Amen. Amen. peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. You are a child of the maker. You are beloved and known. Join us in work of the kingdom. We welcome you home. Join us in work of the kingdom. We welcome you.